you to, to everyone who helped organize this panel today and happy World Toilet Day to everyone. Uh, as, uh, as mentioned, my name is Jennifer Williams. I'm the executive director of a new organization. It's called the Fecal Sludge Management Alliance or the, or the FSM Alliance. And our goal is really to create uh, a platform where organizations working in FSM can, can come together. So really truly about breaking down the silos. Uh, and it is World Toilet Day, but I did just want to, to mention, uh, it's not just about the toilets, which we've heard from many of our speakers today. It's also about the treatment. So it was great to hear some of the, uh, the other speakers talk about some of the safety parameters and new guidelines that have been created around the, around the compost. Uh, specifically, just because we know in certain parts of the world, there are uh, different kinds of pathogens that are endemic to different places where uh, different types of treatments are needed to make sure that everything is truly pathogen free. Um, so this is just a quick, uh, a quick graphic of uh, the uh, what the fecal sludge management cycle is going through all the different options. Um, so it, like I said, it doesn't just stop here, there's a whole, hopefully there's a whole uh, series of steps that happen to, to go to uh, safe treatment, but also reuse and or disposal, the circular economy that many have speakers have mentioned today as well. Um, and I did see when I was looking at uh, Separate's website, there is also uh, an incinera a cinner incinerating toilet, excuse me, um, that uh, Mikhail did not speak about today, but uh, it does sort of stop right, right here uh, at the household level, which I found very interesting as well. Um, I did just want to go back to uh, Professor Romani started uh, the day off mentioning that this is not just a problem for low to middle in income countries and I just wanted to to add on to that as well. Um, since the theme of World Toilet Day is around sustainable sanitation and the intersection with climate change, uh, the current sewer systems in, in uh, other modern cities around the world are very energy, land and water intensive. And uh, a lot of those cities are also, um, they're also experiencing difficulties expanding capacity to keep up with population growth. So I think it really is about innovation, which other, other uh, speakers have also mentioned today. Um, but as we've also heard from many of our speakers, it is really about the whole ecosystem within a country. So choosing the appropriate technology for users, coordination uh, amongst all the different levels of government, um, service providers or service delivery that can meet the user's needs at a competitive and fair price, uh, but also behavior change and public health campaigns, because we know sometimes if you build a toilet, people don't, don't use it. Um, and I think we really need to increase citizen, uh, citizen awareness and, and their engagement as well. And I think this is why it has been so interesting to learn and hear uh, and watch the progress of the Swatch Bharat mission in India specifically. I'm not sure we've ever seen such a uh, ambitious uh, political commitment from all levels, all levels across the across the country. So starting at the very top with Prime Minister Modi, all the way down to to the different levels of of um, local uh, local uh, municipality coordination that we've heard from some of the speakers today, and I think. India gives us a really positive uh, example of how this is possible because as also mentioned today, uh, India is a very diverse uh, subcontinent with many different states, many different differences, many different preferences, uh, you know, all, all kinds of differences. And so I do, I do really find uh, the Indian example quite encouraging to show that um, uh, uh, Diverse context within each state is not a reason not not to try something very big and ambitious, but I think it also really highlights the need for the high level commitment from from policymakers at the highest level and the coordination all, all across and we, we know the work is hard, uh, but that's also not not a reason to do it if, if it wasn't hard it wouldn't it wouldn't be a problem so. I uh, just a uh, tremendous, tremendous thanks to all of the all of the public health workers across India, uh, especially the ones uh, who have been uh, battling with COVID-19 as well. Um, difficult, difficult year, uh, but we know how important uh, water and sanitation, good water and sanitation are. Um, and then lastly, I did just want to do a quick uh, I, uh, to respond to the question also, uh, how can uh, the United Nations universities help? 
And I think uh, going back to the, the topic or the title of the session about breaking down silos is to really help us to support a multidisciplinary approach. So where have we seen successful behavior change campaigns in the past? Uh, so I think about other, other pandemics that have affected the world, uh, Ebola in Africa most recently, but also some of the things, uh, some of the other similar uh, respiratory diseases we've seen in, in the parts of Asia. And, and then also um, uh, in the early 2000s, uh, the HIV AIDS behavior change health campaigns as well. So I think we need to really start looking at what methodologies can we adapt uh, to support a more holistic approach to sanitation as well, to really incorporate these uh, public health and behavior change uh, methodologies. We, we know they exist. We know some have been quite successful. And I think it's, it's time to start borrowing from outside our own sector. Yeah. And then just lastly, I just wanted to quickly conclude with the fact, um, I don't know if any of you know, we do actually organize the only uh, conference on fecal sludge management. It will be next year, uh, in, in hopefully in Jakarta, um, but if not, if not possible in Jakarta, then, then online as well. So uh, it'll be May 31st to June 3rd, um, and more information can be found on our website. So uh, Jennifer, thank you so much. Can you please tell us about your mission and vision of the Fecal Sludge Management Association? Oh, sure. Yes. So um, our goal is really to, to help and support uh, organizations who are working in the, in the area um, on the topic. And it was to really provide a centralized platform for organizations to come together. Fecal Sludge Management has seen an exponential growth since probably 2015. Uh, we've seen that with the attendance of the conference specifically. So uh, we wanted to create an organization not only to be able to, to host the, the conference and to maintain the focus on fecal sludge management, but also to bring together uh, to, to uh, have a more coordinated advocacy approach for the implementation and adoption of fecal sludge management as a utility service. So that, that is sort of our uh, mission, mission, if you will. Um, I, I might, this might sound a little provocative. I <laughs> just want to know where your stance is. You know, the World Toilet Organization, Susanna, all these conferences, they have very, very hefty fees. And they are usually held in very fancy hotels. So it's for a particular community and not for ordinary NGOs, ordinary people like us. So I was wondering, you know, when you say conference and putting people together, which, who are you talking about? That's, that, thank you. No, that's a, that's a great question. And I think it has been a attention for us. I'll, I'll just be very transparent back. It's been attention for us because there was a, there was a point uh, when I personally became involved in the organization of the, of the FSM conference. And my mandate at the time from my, from my former boss was to try to make FSM sexy. So uh, to really, and to really try to, um, bring a certain level of, of organization to the conference that could make sanitation professionals feel as important as a medical doctor. So to, to sort of bring that level of prestige to, to sanitation uh, workers around the world. So it is a, their opposite, uh, the, the point that you raise being inclusionary, but also having a, a very uh, well-polished conference that brings that level of pre prestige our polarizing values. And I think that's been one of the most difficult things that we that we face. And so this is part of the reason um, with crisis comes innovation, right? So uh, knowing how uncertain the world is, we've, um, we're shifting to a, a hybrid conference model, uh, looking at how we can have a more, a smaller, more uh, regionally based in-person conference. So that being in Indonesia, this in 2021, but also providing an online component, which can increase increase the re, uh, reach and also uh, allow people to, to join who wouldn't normally have the funds to travel. Uh, I think we are, we'll, we'll also see more organizations uh, choosing travel policies, taking into account carbon footprint and climate change as well. So just wanting to um, be thinking about how we can reduce carbon foot footprint as, as well. Yeah. 